Good day, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's exciting to see all of you back here for our virtual conversations. Thanks for joining Intercommunity, our very first event for 2020. Today, we'll have a virtual conversation on open standards everywhere, and we are very excited about that. And before I kick us off, I remind us of some basic housekeeping rules that we should all be following throughout this call. Um, if you have a question to ask, please use a chat function. Uh, you can ask your question in uh, either English, uh, Spanish, uh, or French. Someone will translate that question and send it to the moderator. And if you're asking your question, please remember to keep it brief and to the point. And also remember to format your question starting with your first name and your country as well. And uh, if you're not speaking at all times, please remember to mute yourself. Uh, we want to be able to hear everything that the presenters have to say. So in order to block the background noise, make sure that you're muted at all times. And then uh, this session will also be recorded uh, for purposes of those who are not able to join us at this time. And we'll, be, we'll send you a recording after the call. So without further ado, again, I'm excited that all of you decided to join us today. I will invite my colleague, Dan York, to set us off today. Can someone please mute their microphone? Can someone please mute their microphone? All right, Dan, please take it away. Thank you, Evelyn. And I'm delighted to have so many people here today uh, with us. Um, I welcome our individual members, our organization members, chapters, special interest groups, and all of you who are coming in from all around the world in so many different places. Uh, I, I love seeing all the names and the people coming up there. And I appreciate that we're going from the heat of Uganda to the snow of Vermont, as Evelyn sends it over to me my way here. Uh, so I want to spend a little bit of time talking this today about uh, this project, what we are calling the Open Standards Everywhere Project, which is one of the eight projects that are part of the Action Plan uh, 2020. If you have not looked at that action plan, then I would encourage you to do so and to talk and to see what's there. But I want to begin with a bit of a, a story about how we got here, what this, what, where we began with this. Um, and it begins a year ago. And in that time, I, my other role beyond leading this project is as the coordinator of our content across our various different websites. And about a year ago, we were looking at things as part of our 2019 work saying, hey, you know, we promote these things like IPv6 and TLS and, and we want encryption everywhere. Maybe we should make sure we're doing that and we're walking the walk and that kind of stuff. And so we went out and did an audit of all of our different websites, the corporate ones that we operate, and we found that you know we were doing pretty well, but we had a lot of holes and some places to, to, that we needed fixed. So I went and talked to Greg Lechner, one of my colleagues who we hear from here, and Greg in his typical way was like, oh sure, we can fix those up, no problem. It'll be easy, we'll get those websites all working that way. So uh, he went away and I went away, we did stuff, and I didn't hear from Greg, and I didn't hear from Greg, and I didn't hear from Greg. I just kind of figured he was busy, as he was, with IT things and stuff. And, um, but then he got back to me, it was a couple weeks later and stuff, and he was kind of like, so uh, about those web servers. Uh, hey, Greg, I think you're on here. Uh, what, why couldn't you make those work? Well, it's an interesting question. So as Dan said, about a year ago, when we decided to make sure we were as compliant as we thought we would be with a lot of the new standards, I figured it'd be a typical IT task, very easy. Hey, go in, do a quick couple of reads, do some updates. What I found was a very large uh, gap, I would say, in based on what these standards were and actually how to implement them. And then what was even more in depth was having to implement them when you had to involve third parties, such as other like you know, content net delivery network providers. So it became, it went from what I thought would be a nice and easy transition to something that has actually really evolved into this project. Yeah, and, and that was the kind of the key point that we took away from all of this was that, you know, many websiteers, website operators like Greg, want their sites to use the latest standards for security, for availability, for all of that. But it's tough. It's hard. It's hard to figure it out. 
Other ones, other many people don't understand why they should care. I'll give you a great example. HTTP version two has been out for a bit now, and it provides a way to dramatically speed up your website. Uh, sometimes, depending upon which story you look at, which things, it can be as fast as 15% improvement to as much as 80% improvement in terms of things. But people don't know this is out there and that it can be very simple to go and configure in some ways. Another example is something called HSTS, which is a, a one line heading you can change, which can make it so your site is much more secure against that. Uh, but people don't understand some of what these new things are that can go out there in different ways. So as Greg mentioned, there's a lot of different sources out there. Many people have written tremendous, excellent tutorials about it, but, but you've got to verify that those work for your version of uh, Apache or Nginx or whatever else. Some of them can get super technical. Some of them have you know, 57 different ways to go and do things, but all you want to know is how to go and do it. So it's, it's really difficult. You know, Greg's point to us as an organization was we need to make this easier for people like me, for Greg. So this was the project that we came up with. And, and to be honest, I have to credit Greg because he was the one who said, you know, there ought to be an organization that would take this information, make it super easy and, and get it out there to website administrators and others to do. And, and that is this project. Uh, I'm gonna talk about over the next 20 minutes or so what we're doing, but basically we're building a set of public demonstration servers. We've already done that, you'll see that. We're documenting what we did. We wanna promote this information throughout the wider ecosystem of people out there. And we wanna lead by example. We wanna get all of our sites to be as fully secure and standards compliant as we possibly can. And we wanna help all of you who are on this to do that as well and to go beyond that to a, to a larger environment. In the end, our goal is that we wanna have, promote the use of open standards. We wanna make sure people can have their websites as globally connected as possible using things like HTTP2, which helps especially to make sure that websites work in low bandwidth or mobile environments, IPv6, so all these new networks that are coming online that are IPv6 only, the mobile networks, uh, that they can get directly to your websites rather than having to go through gateways and things like that. And then we want them to be secure and trustworthy and TLS, HSTS, DNSSEC, we'll talk about some of those as we go through this. Our goal is that we want open standards to be everywhere and we want to have a more secure web and therefore more secure internet. One question we ran into at the beginning though was, how do we define what a good secure standards compliant web server is? There's many different definitions out there. Many people have test sites, many people have test suites, many people have lots of things like this. So we, um, and so we said, looked around, we looked at a lot of different things and we settled on using one of the sites out there called internet.nl, which is a, a initiative. And we're gonna have a, actually an organization member, NLNet Labs is gonna join us in a moment to talk a little bit about this. But it is a site that tests for a wide, range of what we want to look at, IPv6, DNSSEC, TLS, et cetera. Uh, it was developed by NLNet Labs with support from many different organizations, the Dutch government. Uh, we as the Internet Society were also involved, as was our Internet Society Netherlands chapter was also involved. And then we also are using another site called HTTP.pro to uh, test for HTTP2. Now, I would like to engage all of you in a little experiment. We're, we're gonna test this out. I'd like you all to go to internet.nl and to do a, a, a test. I'd like you to go there and in the first part of the site, it says do a website test. Test a website. Could be your chapter website, your SIG website, your own personal one, your business one, whatever. And in a moment, I'm gonna invite Ralph Dolmans from NLNet Labs to talk a little bit about this. And when Ralph is done, we're gonna run a little poll and I'd love to see where you all come in. I could tell you some of my sites were terrible my own personal ones. Some of our other sites are really good. I'll be curious to see what you get. So if you would go there for a minute, and then I would like to bring in Ralph to talk a little bit about this. First, I do wanna say NLNet Labs is an organization member of the Internet Society. I'm very grateful for their support. Thank you for being a member. And we look forward to, uh, to having you continue to support the work we do. So Ralph, if you're here. I'm here, thank you, Dan. Excellent. Can you hear me? All right. You can. Right, hello everybody. So yes, I'm Ralph from NLNet Labs. Um, for those that don't know us, we are a not-for-profit based in Amsterdam. We make open source software for the core of the internet, we like to call it. 
Um, so we have well-known DNS software, we have routing security software, but we are also involved in developing uh, standards and also we are a member of the Dutch Internet Standards Platform. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So these are the members of the platform. Um, indeed, what is interesting here is that it's a mix of government and non-governmental parties all working together in a attempt to um, increase the adoption of what we call modern internet standards. So one of the things we do as platform is this. Um, we, we have this platform called internet.nl. Uh, next slide, please. So internet.nl is a um, website where you, well, you're now all using it to test your website. So you can test your website there, but you can also test for um, your web, uh, your mail server or for the connection you're using right now. So the, you're testing your ISP in that case, basically. So I would like to point out here, because there's some confusion sometimes, that this is not exclusively a security test. So scoring less than 100% does not necessarily mean that you're uh, completely secure. And on the other hand, scoring 100% does not mean you are secure because security is more than just using uh, modern internet standards. But our goal here is to make it um, visible to users how they score on different standards, um, because that also creates awareness. ISPs often say, yeah, we don't support IV6 because there is no user demand for it. But if users don't know what they're missing and that they need it, they will also not go to their ISPs. So that's the idea here. Um, next slide, please. So we have three different tests. You're now all doing the website test. So there we test whether the web server you're using has IPv6 and whether the DNS, the name server you're using has IPv6, whether your domain is signed using DNSSEC. We do a TLS test. So um, we check things like the ciphers you're using, the TLS versions you're using, if this, the certificate you're offering um, uses valid algorithms. And we have something we call the application security and privacy options which um, test things like um, HTTP headers we think you should use. So next to the website test, we have the connection test where we check if the connection you're using right now has IPv6 support and if the resolver you're using has IPv6 support and if the resolver you're using um, checks for DNSSEC signatures. And we have the email test. So again, IPv6 DNSSEC. We there have the um, section with the, or for the um, anti-spoofing, standard, so DMAR, DKIM, SPF, and we do the encryption there as well with Star TLS and Dane. Um, next slide, please. So those are a lot of things we're testing on, and we realize it can be quite a challenge to, um, to get a 100%, but it is very much possible. So on the website, we have a Hall of Fame where we show um, all the domains of web servers and mail servers that score a 100%, and right now we have almost 7,000 um, unique um, web domains that score the full 100%. So it is very, it's really possible to do so. Next slide, please. So this whole project is available. Um, as I said before, we make open source software. So we also wanted to release this software as open source. So on this URL, you can find um, our test suite. So if you're wondering how we test certain things and you're able to read Python, then please go here and have a look. And on the other hand, if you think there are improvements possible on our test, then we're happy to receive pull requests. Next slide, please. So next to this um, website with a web interface, we also have a batch environment with a RESTful API where you can test large sets of domains. So that's something we, for example, uh, periodically do for all Dutch government domains. Um, but we're also... Um, open to offer this for to other parties. So if you want to test a large set of domains, then there are possibilities here. In that case, please contact us and we can see what we can do for you. Next slide, please. Um, this, these are things we're working on right now that are almost done. This is mainly based or for the mail test because there is only so much you can test from the outside. You can test way more when you have a real email flow going on. So we're now working on a, um, a feature where we can send an email and ask the user to reply to the email and then we can also test mm -hmm. whether the user for example validates Dane or whether they validate for those um those anti-spoofing standards next slide please another thing we would like to do is make it possible for other parties to offer this in a localized way to their um to their own users so 
for example, have a localized Spanish version of internet.nl. So we're now thinking about ways to decouple the um, front end we have now and the testing back end to make this possible. And in that case, you can, for example, also um, make your own conclusions used from the, um, the results we're giving you. Right now, the TLS test we have, for example, is based on the guidelines from the Dutch and uh, NCSC, but it might be that in other uh, countries you want to use other guidelines. So we were, we're thinking of ways how to decouple this. Um, it is, however, good to mention here that this is only a design phase we're just thinking about this and not implementing it right now because um, this is a feature that is not funded yet. So if you have ideas on how we can get funded or if you want to help to if you think this is a good idea and want to help us out here, then please reach out to us. And on the next slide, you can see my email address where you can contact me. Um, and with that, I'm happy to take questions if there are any. Thanks, Ralph. And we're going to put up a poll now. So you should see this and, and you can go and say, where did your site fit in? Um, and you can click whatever that is and we'll release the announcement. I'm, uh, I, I learned something here today because I saw that thing about batch testing and given that I just sat uh, over the last couple of weeks doing a hot 125 sites manually, I was going through and testing all of our corporate sites and chapter sig ones just to see where we were. Uh, let's talk about that API. <laughs> yes, definitely, yes. I saw Greg laughing there too, because we've been trying to make sure that we uh, do our corporate sites regularly. And uh, yes, that would be great. <laughs> all right, let's see, we're getting some results coming in. Um, well, actually, to tell you as you're looking at this, I see people have been putting things in the chat. Um, we also did a, a little test and looked at what the Alexa top 25 did. We ran them through the test results too, and we found that of the Google properties, of course, had many of these things because they've been focused around some of this, this stuff with IPv6 and HTTPS and HSTS and TLS 1.3 and HTTP2, all those things. But other sites, as you look down through here, did not. Um, Interestingly, Wikipedia had IPv6 for their website, but then they didn't have DNS connections, um, you know, DNS records that were pointing people to their IPv6 address. And, and that's true, I found, of a couple of chapters as well. So anyway, and as we mentioned here, our own sites were getting better. We were actually at 100%, and then you guys changed the test a little bit. So we went, we're now at 97%. We got one more little thing to do. It's the detail about using that. So uh, let's see, I think poll results have slowed down. Let's go ahead and end that and show people the results there. Where do I see this? Okay. And there we go. We see some folks, excellent. We're in that 90% or higher. They're doing really good. Some folks in 75%. And then yes, but the winners were definitely in the 25% to 50 or the few in the, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I've seen some of those in the, in the chat that's there. Uh, thank you for sharing those results. That's good info for us to have. And let's talk about how we're intending now to help ourselves and you and all of us look, make, work to make this all a little bit better. So that's the Open Standards Everywhere project. Some of you may have heard it last year called the Functioning Open, Ser open System Open Server, Open Systems Open Server Standard, Open Standard Server Environment. That was what it was, Fossey. We called it. You can see why we changed the name. Open Standards Everywhere uh, has a little bit better of a ring. The main people that you'll see on the call and others are myself as the project lead. Greg Lechner, who you heard from before, implementing at Ashland, who works on the documentation. And we also will be, uh, we're in the process of looking to hire a communications lead. In fact, if you're interested, internetsite.org slash careers, you can see the things that are out there. And uh, we're going on there. I just got the question, somebody asked about the slides. These slides will be shared. So you will be able to go and, and, and get a look at that. Our audiences that we're having, where we're targeting this is members of the community, you all, um, but also uh, website operators, administrators in the larger public, and also people who are, you know, running, you know, talking about these kind of topics and working with us. I, I will say, we're not, we realize that many of our larger organizations and many of our organization members and others, they may have larger setups. You know, a, a large company doesn't necessarily have just a single web server. They have many web servers and things. So the specific documents we're creating
spread the word about how we can make our sites more secure, faster, better, available, all those kinds of things. I do want to be clear about the scope. We're talking about the connections to the server. We're not focused on what happens to the actual content, the CMS. We're talking about what are the, how do we make it more secure and accessible to get to the web server itself? So getting there and, and connecting. So we're not talking about things like page speed performance or mobile usability or accessibility or these things. That could be a future stage of the project, but that's not today. We're gonna crawl before we walk, before we run and spreading the word as we go through all these things. Now, another question is, so this is great, but what if you can't change your server configuration? Uh, I'm in this case personally. I host several of my websites with a provider and I can't go and change the actual configuration files. Um, and in that case, you know, you may not be able to make the changes directly, but our hope and our goal is that you will be able to take these documents and send them to your hosting provider and say, hey, could you turn on this and here's some good documentation that's there. The, we've already started with building four servers to make them available so people can see what good looks like. We've done it with Apache and Nginx, two of the common uh, web servers that people have used. We've also used them with a content delivery network, a CDN in front of them, because that's common that people want to use. We do that, many other people do that as well. So uh, we've already done that, it's, they're up and running. Links will be available that you can see if you want, and they're just, a, <laughs> they're a basic server that's sitting there, but they are up and running if you wanna test them and do any tests against them and see what's there. We're in this stage now. We started to go and, and document exactly what we did and to cull from all of that massive amount of documentation out there, what are the best tools that we can go and, and provide, what are the best pointers we can do, how can we help people understand, and how can we help people understand why this is important. So that's where we are today. We're in the middle of, of writing up some of these different documents. We've made one live about how to configure HSTS, uh, which we can talk about at some point if you want, but it's there. The other ones we are developing so that people will be able to go and understand that. We, as inter the Internet Society, we are going to make these available in English, French, and Spanish. But we're also doing something that's a little different from how we've developed documentation in the past in that we are developing this all publicly. And we're doing it all up on GitHub. And actually, Ashlyn, if you want to light up the other poll, just asking people if they've ever used GitHub or what they do while I talk about this, it'd be great to do this. Um, we're using GitHub. It's, you know, primarily GitHub is a place where people put open source code for projects, for things and other stuff. But it can be used for documentation. And we're doing it there because we want to use the issue tracker. We want to be able to put the information up there publicly. We also want to make it so that you all who are out there in the community can potentially contribute because we're going to go and write documentation about Apache and Nginx. But we've had other people say, hey, how about if I do this for my web server? Great. We're going to talk about this, give instructions for a couple of the CDNs that we use, but there will be other ones that we would invite other people to provide information about. We also know that other people may be interested in, in translating this content into other languages beyond the ones that we'll support. And so again, that will be a way that we intend to use this to, to help spread this information as widely as possible. And also, quite honestly, there's a mechanism people can find it. Other developers, other people can find it through searching at GitHub. So it's there. We're curious, too, to see what kind of results we have here. Go ahead and um, let's see. Let's end that and share the results. What do we see? We see some people use it regularly. Some people use it occasionally. Some people have created an account. And a good number have no idea what I'm talking about. And that's OK. We're not expecting that everybody will be able to do this. If you do use GitHub, you can go to the uh, there and you can watch it or you can star it and you can uh, put that. We can share the link to this in the chat so that people can go there and see what's there as well. Uh, and you can search and or you can see that there. So. Or 
help, quite honestly, because we can't reach everywhere and we would like to spread this word. We'd like to do this. We'll do it, of course, through our own channels, our own places, um, and through some of the events and things we're doing. We're also looking to get this out beyond our community into beyond places out there in the wider internet space, into web developer communities, into spaces where people are talking about these issues. And we'd welcome any of you on this call who want to partner with us or work with us around this. If you have an event, if you'd like us to do a webinar, if you'd like us to be a guest on a podcast that you do, or if you'd like to do any of those things, we'd be very interested to talk to you about how we can work with you to promote this. And we also want to enable you to promote this. Our intent is that we'll have slides like this, only a reduced form, that you could potentially use to talk about this project to your chapters or to other people or to other groups that are in your region, because we'd like to go and, and work with that. Um, the, and then the final part, of course, is we're going to practice what we promote. As we said before, we're auditing our sites. We're working on changes. I would like to hope that by the end of the year, this will have a whole lot more green. One interesting aspect, of course, is that some of this stuff is, works with how we've, we're set up. We use a content delivery network. Our sites are currently hosted with a provider who uses Amazon services inside of things. And right now, we've learned that they don't support TLS 1.3 yet. So we're talking to them about how to get that involved and to work with that. And then once they do that, that entire column on TLS 1.3 will pretty much all go green for us. So it's some of those things. It's also been very interesting. Greg's work talking to some of these big companies has actually got them thinking about, well, how can we do this? So again, back to the comment that Ralph made, unless people ask for some of these things, the companies are not going to respond. But by our going and asking about TLS 1.3, we're adding another name to people who can be able to go and work with us. So beyond this, web servers and what we're doing, we have a few other goals. And I, before I say this, I see questions in the chat. It's excellent. I would love to, uh, I want to answer those. And that's a key. In about a few minutes, I'm going to end and I want to answer questions because I see a lot of them and I'm looking forward to talking to them. So one of the things we're going to do is uh, as we get the documentation done over the next month or so, we then want to think, can we help make this even more automated? Uh, many people these days are using Docker containers to go and launch web servers. Can we create a Docker container that has web Apache and Nginx web servers already configured to do all this kind of work for you? So if you're launching a new site, you could just be able to go and do that. I actually already had somebody in our community reach out to me and said, hey, he'd like to be involved with, uh, with helping do this. So again, a great way somebody can participate. But this is something we're thinking about. Beyond that, we're going to have to keep the servers up to date. We're going to be checking them, making sure they're there. We're also going to be watching as web standards evolve. So we know, for instance, that I was talking about HTTP2, but there's something in the pipes called HTTP3, also known as QUIC, that is going to provide another mechanism to go and help make websites even more faster, more secure, all of those things. That's something we're going to watch. And as that gets to the point where it can be deployed, we're going to look at how do we build that into the Open Standards Everywhere project so people can do it. There's some other website packaging standards that are probably a couple of years out, but we're looking at this project as a five-year arc. And so this website work is this first year, but it will continue over that time, and we'll see what we can do. We intend to be at the hackathons that are at the IETF standards events where we'll go in there and look and see what other stuff could we potentially bake into this. We're also going to be looking at what's next, because obviously open standards everywhere, everywhere is a lot more than just web servers. Okay, but we have to start somewhere and we have to start small, you know, that whole crawl before you walk, before you run thing. So we're starting at web servers, but then we're looking and saying, well, what's next? You know, internet.nl already has a test framework for mail servers. Is this something that in the subsequent year, or somewhere in this and the next time, do we help create the documentation or, or you know, curate the documentation to say, here's how you go and make a secure mail server that does the right things. There's, again, there's lots of documentation. Some of it is just simplifying it and saying, to do this, you need to do boom, boom, boom. Maybe we'll do that. 
DNS servers, there's a lot of interest in encrypted in DNS over HTTPS, DNS over TLS. Are there ways we could help people understand better how to go and do those kind of things? Some of you will note that another project we have in our action plan 2020 is for network time security and securing the time layer that works in all of this. Uh, maybe we'll, I mean, one of our thoughts is that we'll provide documentation as that project matures over the next while to help do that. So these are ideas of where we're looking to go with the Open Standards Everywhere project. And we're certainly looking for your feedback and input as well as where do you think we should go with this? How can we evolve this? What can we do and work with that? Um, okay, so let me just say again, our goal, we want open standards everywhere and to go through this. So there's a couple of ways you can get involved. Some are right now. One of those is, and I'll show you a picture in a moment, in your member profiles, an Internet Society member, if you go up to the top corner of the Internet Society's website and you log in, you go into our, our portal. Some of you have heard that called Member Nova, but it's our member portal in some way. You can go in and sign up to receive, to express your interest in this project. We will then send out updates. We will periodically and say, here's what we're doing. Here's how you can be involved. As we mentioned earlier, if you do GitHub, you can connect with us there. You can be notified about changes, things we're doing. We have also just started up a community um, on our Connect engagement platform where people can go and participate in there and share ideas, ask questions as you go out there, you know, and you see what you, um, and you see what you've done or you, you try some of these things out and you say, how can I get my site from 9% to something higher? It's a place where you can ask those questions, share ideas. Now, I'll be I say we can't necessarily provide tech support to help redo you know, your entire site, but certainly we can ask questions and there will be other people there who can share ideas and things like that. Um, test your servers, help in the documentation. Again, help with translation languages, help with working in, into other um, services. Uh, there also may be other ways. You just heard Ralph talk about automation of this. Maybe there's some ways to help with some tools to help develop this for testing. I don't know. There's some ways we can do it. And as I mentioned, we'll be looking for your help in helping promote this. And we would love to partner with you in various different ways, whether you're an individual, a chapter member, an organization member, or just somebody who's interested who wandered in here somehow and wound up just looking at this. We, we welcome all involved. Again, for your member profile, you just go up to the member login, you go into that area. These instructions are also on that link you see on the page, internetsite.org action plan slash 2020 slash projects. If you scroll to the bottom, you can see these instructions. And if you're a chapter special interest group or member or organization member, you can, there's some special things you can do to indicate your interest as that level of member. And you can be able to show what you want to do. There are, seven other projects. You can also express your interest in those projects and how you would like to help those as well. So you can go and see that. I mentioned the Connect community. We'll have the link there. You can also just go to the Open Standards Everywhere page and there's an action on there that you can go and click on to, to join the community. But as you'll go in there, there's some place for discussions, there's an announcement, there's some areas that you can do that. And uh, you can also choose how you want to respond. Do you want to get the messages individually or periodically? And once you're in there, you can also just send email to the community or you can log into the website and go and do that. So with that, I would like to invite, if Roberto is online, is Roberto uh, Sombrano? Hi. Hi, Dan. Hi, Roberto from the Bolivia chapter is one of the chapters that expressed interest in this uh, through his interest in, the, in our member portal. And so, Roberto, um, tell us a little bit about what interested you in this project. Hi, Dan, again, and hi, everybody. It's great to be with you today. And also, first of all, to congratulate you for the great job you've done so far. I think it's a, a very fantastic project, and I think we are going to benefit, all of us are going to benefit for, for this. Well, as you already say, say, said, um, it's really difficult to implement it when we have a web page supported in a, in a hosting server. Uh, like we do, and like maybe most of us 
have right now. And um, what I think it's going to be great is that we can that we could use the the audience we have not necessarily related to our our chapters in our countries but uh, related to to people that works in in different institutions that maybe uh, that will be also get benefits from this what i was thinking is that in my case that i work in the in the city hall in in la paz we can we can take advantage of all these documentations of the all of this uh, um, support and and tools that we will be uh, able to get in order to to support the, the, the technical uh, people in in this uh, in this city hall to to make improvements to their web pages and i think this is one example but for uh, re regarding to all of the other members and regarding to their their offices it's of course going to be really helpful so i don't want to send myself but i think it's a great project and i think we are going to work really closely in the near future Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you very much, Roberto, on that. I would also say that uh, Sandro uh, Car Carmes from the uh, ISOC Georgia chapter uh, was also very interested. He could not get here because of uh, the timing of it with his work day, but he expressed an interest from the, the Georgia chapter because they like to support new initiatives and they've done a good bit of work with IGX and community networks and manner. So they want to try something else and are looking at how they can use this project to uh, to help their website and also others that are in their their community. There are a couple of community events and ways that you can help. Um, if you're going to the IETF 107 meeting in Vancouver on March, there will be a hackathon at the beginning of it. I will be there, uh, assuming the meeting goes ahead as, it, as we're thinking it will. Uh, and uh, we'll be a, a time to test the documentation, see what else we can do, and I'd welcome anybody participating there. There is also the global chapter training that, have, that is going on. It's, we're going to be doing our part in May. You may have seen the opportunity for your chapter or SIG to have some volunteer be involved with this project. Uh, our goal there, we're going to do some hands-on training some, uh, by a webinar, I should say. We'll be doing some training to help those volunteers uh, be, uh, learn about how they, what they can do for their site and answer their specific questions. Again, we would also welcome other ideas, ways that we could get involved in some way. So in the end, we hope that this will lead to a more secure and trustworthy, globally accessible web and therefore an internet, and ultimately help promote the internet model of networking and build a bigger, stronger internet for us all. That is our goal. So with that, I'm gonna open it to questions, and I see we have a whole bunch of them. And I know that I would again encourage you to get involved in different ways. So. We have about 20 minutes, it looks like. All right. So questions, how do we want to proceed with this here? I see a whole bunch. Um, do we have a, or, okay, one question was, do we have ISOC organization members on board? Uh, we have, uh, well, we've had several express different levels of interest, but we're just kind of launching this to a larger community. So, Stay tuned, and if you're an organization member, we'd love to have you uh, engage with us. Let's see, other questions that we see here. Uh, somebody asked about training for IPv6. Yes, we will have some of that. Um, we may not have a specific training about IPv6, uh, but we will point people to where there is training going on with that. Uh, Joe asked, are there plans to measure things that are not under control of the server admin, routes to that IP, et cetera? Uh, <laughs> maybe. That's, so yeah, let's just it <laughs> said quite a bit in chat that there's plans to do that, um, at least specific to our. Okay. Um, I see John, um, John Clemson. Hey, John, greetings from just a couple hours north of you. So you ask about, um, you looked at those sites, highly instructive. You looked at uh, a couple of the ITU sites, direct outreach may be in order. And yes, that's part of what we're hoping to do is to, uh, is to help reach out to folks in that. You also suggested, had the question about GitHub and whether it's appropriate. I I've already had somebody ask me, it's like, well, GitHub doesn't support IPv6, so why are you using it? And, <laughs> and the answer is we thought about that, we looked at that. I'd be glad to have a conversation about it's, uh, 
about that in greater detail. The reality is that um, it, it helps in many ways. And also this is an experiment. We're gonna try it out, see what works. And, uh, and if it doesn't work, then we will, won't use it again. But in the meantime, we're trying it out. Uh, does it check about SQL injection vulnerability? Uh, again, we're talking, we're looking at from the kind of network layer on down in the scope of things. So we're looking at how do you get connected to the site? How, do, how secure is that? Things above that with the content of the site, like SQL injections, are not part of our scope today. It isn't to say we couldn't do that you know, in the future, but today we're focused on network layer down. Related questions. Do you have staff that can offer this webinar in Spanish and French? And the answer is um, we have, I can't say yes at the moment, but the, the intent is that yes, we will do that. So that training I mentioned, the global chapter training in May, we will be offering that in English, Spanish, and French. And so between now and then, we will both have a good set of slides that will be more training focused. Like we will skip that story at the beginning and we'll talk about some of the focus around that. And we will also get that into Spanish and French. And neither of those will be delivered by me because you don't want me speaking either language. German maybe, but not French or Spanish. What else do we have here? Uh, can we issue good practice badges for websites that score 100%? <laughs> well, so we could, but quite honestly, I think we're more inclined to let people like internet.nl, you know, run that program, provide those kind of things and work with that. Um, somebody mentioned, can I think this project should also automatically connect to the W3 validator? Uh, again, that's a great idea. But that's, uh, that's, again, going above the network layer. We're focused right now on the network layer and how do we do that. Certainly, I've had people express interest to say that maybe in the future, we could, the, sec the next part of the web piece would be to go up a layer higher and think about W3C validation, uh, accessibility standards, uh, some of those kind of things. All of those would be logical evolutions. But again, crawl walk, run. <laughs> for IPv6 training, I would recommend Hurricane Electric training, which is free. Yes, Hurricane Electric HE has been doing great IPv6 training from the very beginning of uh, things in different ways. All right, those are the questions I've seen. Are there any other questions people have? Any other chapters wish to say anything or organization members or people who are here? Moderators, I'm not, uh, how are we doing? Okay. That's it, those are all of the questions so far. Okay. Well, if I don't hear anything, uh, I will just say thank you to everyone for here. Um, the, how can I contact you on IGF project? Uh, I'm not sure. My email address is on, oh, hey, I never displayed the last slide. Um, I am there, york at isoc.org, if you'd like to, to uh, respond to me. Yes, Olivier mentions some of the regional internet registries like Aaron and Ripe and, and uh, APNIC, AFRNIC, BlackNIC. They all also offer IPv6 training of different levels. Those are all great to have as well. And okay, well, thank you all for being on here today. Thank you for your support of this work. And please, Engage with us, let us know your interest, contact us, and share the word at, as we get the documentation on over the next couple of weeks, and, uh, and let's go make this happen. We'll wind up with a bigger, stronger internet that will be more secure and based on open standards. Thank you all. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.